Valley is fertile ground for musical talent, some born into a musical family and others drawn to an instrument later in life. No Strings Attached is about people who have a passion for creating music, whether they're players, teachers, coaches, builders, or tuners. If you think that teaching doesn't influence kids, guitarist Alan Jossel begs to differ. He credits his grade three music teacher, Gladys Schmidt, with his decision to become a musician. She had so much enthusiasm and boundless energy that everybody loved learning to play the recorder and the ukulele. If you think you're not making a difference in the world teaching music, think again. For Alan Jossel, his grade three music teacher at Royston Elementary, Gladys Schmidt, made the biggest difference. She had boundless energy, and he was so impressed, he started a career in music. He picked up a guitar at the age of 10, and look at him now. I went to school at Royston Elementary, and in those years, uh, they had actually a really good music program, and the music teacher, uh, and I'll never forget her, her uh, Gladys Schmidt, who uh, was the, the music teacher at Royston Elementary. Um, she was uh, just boundless energy, and uh, so it, we played recorder, you know, in the you know grade one, two, three, and then everybody was excited in grade four because then it was ukulele. So Alan is giving back by also becoming a music teacher, and he is a full-time instructor at Long and McQuaid. Some students are very serious in the sense of. Um, uh, you know, want to go down an academic path, uh, and I can certainly prepare students for that. Um, and then uh, lots just there to see me for the, the, just the pleasure of music as well. For all aspiring musicians, Alan's advice is not to go home and practice, but to play and to love what you're doing. I have a, hopefully a fun spin on the time spent. I, I don't necessarily call it practicing. I, I, I say to them, don't practice, go home and play. Play the guitar, spend time with the guitar, and, uh, and you know, certainly from whatever coaching that I can provide as, a, as an inspiration, then, uh, then you know, I think people find some pleasure in that. Alan's inspirations come from musicians such as Leo Kotke and Don Ross from Toronto. Lots of folks would describe this as sort of modern acoustic uh, uh, finger style playing. Um, we're trying to make one instrument sound like several. Um, so whether that be composing or uh, arrangements of familiar material. From Zocalo's Cafe in downtown Courtney, this is Judy Mirakami for Shaw TV. Music is a universal language, and for Doug Cox and Sam Hurry, it's been a bridge between the generations. When you talk about roots, they are something that hold you and plant you into the ground. It could be vegetables, it could be family, and it could also apply to music. For Sam Hurry and Doug Cox, roots are really important. I've really had an amazing life of touring all over the world and playing with amazing people in amazing places. Um, it's not so important anymore. What's, what's important to me now is my roots, being at home with my family, playing music with my friends and getting the chance to practice and get better as a player, which is something that you don't do on the road. I turn 70 next year and I just feel like it's time to just chill and I'm doing more work around so that I can be closer to kids and grandkids and home and all that kind of thing, but I'm, I'm not through yet. To keep a balanced life, Doug sits in a swivel chair, has an office with two computers and guitars. So when he's not playing, he's also organizing Music Fest and the different performers in the Comox Valley. 
It's true. When I'm working at home, I have I have my desk set up with a swirly chair, and I have two computers. So I go from from my job with Music Fest to my job as a musician, and then I also have all my instruments lined up. So I spend all day just going around in a circle, making sure and trying to spend an equal amount of time on on all of those things. It doesn't always work that way, but it it at least forces me to practice a little bit every day, which is really the most important thing to me, but it's the thing that makes no money at all, the practicing part. <laughs> Coming from six generations of musicians, Sam Hurry comes by music naturally. His 92-year-old father still plays the guitar and the fiddle, and Sam has children and grandchildren that also play musical instruments. Quite a few of my grandkids play as well, so, so for the Hurry family now, I think that's one, two, three, for five generations of the family have been players. You know, God looked down in the cool of the day, all that by his name. He refused to answer. To find out more information on where Sam and Doug are playing, you can go to coxandhurry.com or go to dougcox.org or the Cumberland Hotel where they're normally playing. In Cumberland, this is Judy Mary Cammy for Shaw TV. Jordy Robinson was born in the Comox Valley into a musical family and grew up playing cello. Not content with just playing an instrument, he auditioned for and won one of 14 top coveted spots at Western University to become a piano technician. One of the key elements in playing music is making sure it's in tune. If you have ever heard a piano out of tune, it's almost like nails on a chalkboard. My ear uh, was able to pick up the, the high frequencies that it requires to tune a piano. Jordy Robinson is a young man who actually is certified now in piano tuning, so he is a piano technician who lives in the Comox Valley. He also plays the cello. So you've got the cello, the piano, two string instruments that are very different, but he comes with it naturally with a love of music. And because Jordy has played cello all his life, he's able to hear the different sounds, which are actually sound waves, whether they're closer together, further apart, lower, higher. The strange thing about tuning is you don't necessarily listen to the fundamental notes that you're playing. What you're actually listening to to tune a piano are the high overtones, the frequencies, uh, the very, very high frequencies. And um, you're listening to how they're interacting with each other, which causes these uh, wave beating patterns. So when you play two notes, you hear way up high, wah, 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 and it takes a special focus to be able to hear those beats. The piano technician has a few different tasks that they need to do. One is tuning the piano, and you're right, you're, you're tuning the strings. Um, Another is regulating the action. So the action is all those moving parts between the key and the string. Um, and with wear and with humidity changes, all those thousands of parts will break down or they'll expand. Or, and so they need constant uh, maintenance and regulation. And then a third aspect of piano tuning is voicing, manipulating the hammers so that the whole piano has an evenness of sound. So what does it take to play instruments well? Well, one of the things is passion. Having a passion for music where you want to play. So Jordy keeps himself busy throughout the community. I love the music, I love playing music, and I find the music, it, it keeps me active in the community, and we have a little duo called Soundbite, and we play at different events. I'm playing in the pit uh, for Rainbow Youth Theatre, Beauty and the Beast this year, 
Um, I have a little string trio called Conbrio String Trio for different uh, events as well. So lots of different things. If you'd like to get in touch with Jordy, you'll find him on Facebook under Robinson's Piano Service, or if you would like to email him, jordypianotech at gmail.com. From the Comox Valley, this is Judy Mirakami for Shaw TV. Passion and patience do not often go hand in hand, but luthier Al Hasakawa has found a way to make it work. He's combined the passion for guitars that he's had since the age of 15 with his love of woodworking and now works from home doing what he loves best. For all masters, patience is a requirement. Most of the scraping is right on the ebony and, it, and I'm just barely touching the other rest of it so it doesn't affect it. It's just like a musician, I guess, like, uh, you know, you've got, the, you got this passion for something and uh, you don't know why or anything, like it just happens and uh, you just can't stop. Al Hasakawa is a BC boy born and bred, more particularly from Vancouver Island. He loves guitars, he's been a musician all his life from the age of 15, he was in a band and now he is making guitars and helping others with their guitars and repairing them as well. Well, I've been playing the guitar since I was about 15 years old, you know. Never was a great player, but I loved it, and uh, I was always a woodworker. I just, I just love doing it, and I don't think about time or nothing. And I always felt whether I'm going to succeed as, uh, to make a living at it or not. I never even thought about that. I just kept on doing it. <laughs> Al Hasakawa is a luthier, and his brand is Haas Guitars. As he said, Hasakawa was just too long to put on the bridge. I build uh, classics, flamenco guitars, and I build several different kinds of steel string guitars. And the odd electric guitars, not really into electric guitars much, but I do build a few of them once in a while, you know, just for something different. Al's very particular about the kinds of woods he used, and I didn't realize that Sitka Spruce from Vancouver Island is prize possession for guitars. Uh, I use uh, all kinds of exotic woods, you know, like the rosewoods, ebony's, and stuff like that, you know. And the, uh, but the tops, they all come from BC, from Vancouver Island, the cedar and the, and the spruce tops that I use. A few years ago, I found out one of my customers found a, a rosewood chair. It was tur turned out to be Brazilian rosewood, and uh, I made a few guitars out of that, and I got enough for making bindings and bridges and other things, you know. Well, it's, it's the whole process when I'm building, also when, it, when, the, when it's completed and the customer gets it. And uh, they look on their faces. <laughs> if you'd like to get in touch with Al Hasakawa to either build you a guitar or to help fix it, you can call him at 250-334-2080. For Shaw TV, this is Judy Mirakami. With roots in the Deep South, rhythm and blues comes naturally to Luke Blue Guthrie. Deriving motivation from hardship, blues doesn't have to be about down, but it can be about change for the better. Luke found that volunteering his time and talent helped him get a footing, stay connected with the community, and give back in this land of plenty. It doesn't always have to be about being down, but uh, it can be about change, right? What does it take to become a musician here in the Comox Valley? Well, according to Luke Luke Guthrie, it's practice, practice, practice. supposed to tear my good name down. They don't know me, babe. Although Luke Blue Guthrie was born and raised in the Comox Valley, his roots are actually in the Deep South, which makes it perfect for his rhythm and blues music. I grew up uh, technically below the poverty line in this valley and uh, understanding the hardships around housing and, you know, just surviving in, in increasingly difficult economic times the problems of racism in this country, those maybe sometimes less than pleasant topics are some of the things that I really derive uh, motivation from. They don't know me, babe. They don't know you. Baby, nobody knows the truth. 
once had a family Big shiny cars A swimming pool And a house damn near paid off People started talking Spread a little bad news Now nobody knows the truth I have a strong desire, like I, I hope we all do, to, to change my life or the community or maybe even the world. And so I think I, I, I pull a lot of uh, energy from the situations that I see that, uh, you know, find people in less fortunate circumstances. Luke has been surrounded by this music ever since he was a kid, and he remembers going to the farmer's market and watching Doug Cox and Sam Hurry play. This community has been very, very supportive of me and my family um, throughout my life in, in a number of different regards, not just in the arts. But, uh, you know, one of the ways that I kind of did find a bit of a footing here was, was coming up doing volunteer things. And uh, so it's, it's always been a way for me to stay connected with community and to give, continue giving back what I'm still receiving, you know, in this land of plenty. For all you upcoming musicians or aspiring musicians, Luke Lou Guthrie says, close the door, turn off that computer, and practice. You just got to put in the time and the practice. Turn off your computer and, uh, you know, close the door, get to work. That's, yeah, there, there really is no substitute for practice. If you'd like to get in touch with Luke Lou Guthrie, you can go to his website, lukeblueguthrie.com. From the Comox Valley, this is Judy Murakami for Shaw TV. Playing the harp resonates and envelops the musicians in sound waves, bringing them full circle with the music. It's an ancient instrument rooted in many different cultures, and Roger Helfert traveled 3,000 miles to buy a harp that was made 300 miles from where he grew up. When Roger plays the harp, he is surrounded and enveloped. The quality of the instrument is basically, it sits here, is basically resonating against the heart chakra. Um, and so you're completely enveloped in all of the sound waves of this instrument. As soon as the harp began to play in this Sims Park, it transformed it into a magical fairyland. After growing up in Alberta, Roger Helfer went 3,000 miles to Nova Scotia, bought a harp there that was made 300 miles from where he grew up. Everything comes full circle, as he's found out. When I went to Nova Scotia, I was there for two weeks before university began, and I thought, you know what, I think I'm going to buy myself a harp, because this is Celtic land, right? Um, what I discovered, there was one harp that I was able to find that was in Halifax, and that harp actually had been made in Prince George, B.C. So I traveled 3,000 miles to find one that was actually made 300 miles from where I actually grew up. When the first light of the day washes my face Until the stars dance above the darkened sea Oh, it blesses my life Since you first came on this journey with me And I can feel you deep in my heart Never alone anymore And I can feel that we'll never part until our breath is no more And I can feel you deep in my heart Never alone anymore And I can feel that we'll never part Until our breath is no more The harp is used, I mean it's this ancient instrument that has been around for thousands of years 
in basically every country in the world has, has had some form of a harp type instrument. It roots and links itself through all sort of human civilization in, in some ways. If you'd like to get in touch with Roger about lessons or buying his CDs or about anything, you can go to his website, rogerhelfert.ca. His CDs are also available at the Comox Valley Art Gallery. For Shaw TV, this is Judy Mirakami. Having crossed the ocean to follow the love of his life, Anela Kahiamwe was worried that he wouldn't be able to find work. But he's thrilled that people in the Comox Valley love music. And Anella is able to spread aloha not only on Vancouver Island, but on cruise ships and Hawaii. His name is very unusual and he's one of the very few Kahiamois in the world. Anella Kahiamoi is a man of the islands, both the Vancouver Island and the Hawaiian Islands. My last name means to, means to sleep, Kahiamoi. It was given by the king of Oahu. Uh, you know, a long time ago, and he named this, given our family this name because we were to watch him at night. And so he said to the people that this family is to watch me at night, their name is Kahiamoi. So I have not met another Kahiamoi. There's not many Kahiamois around. Anella followed his heart not only for music, but for the love of his life, and has resided in the Comox Valley for the last five years with his wife and daughter. You like the morning sun with its warm embrace. I see the beauty in your smiling face. That makes me love you more, more and more each day. Just to be close to you. Aloha ba'u'iya Although he was worried that he was not going to find work here in the valley, he is busier than ever and goes between Hawaii and the ocean and the Kamox Valley. I thought I would have a hard time making music a career here in the valley, but since people really like music here, a lot of artsy people, and, and I, I've been getting a lot of work, I'm very happy. And I get to go home because a lot of times I got gigs in Hawaii too. And so I get to see my friends and family and play music with them too. I just gotta be keeping and uh, spreading the aloha, you know, and doing what I do. And I love playing music. So whether there's one person in the audience or a thousand, whatever, I I'm play the same way every time. If you'd like to get in touch with Anella, he is on Facebook. From the Comox Valley, this is Judy Mirakami for Shaw TV. We hope you've enjoyed No Strings Attached. The Comox Valley is rich in musical talent, and we hope to continue bringing you a lot of stories on all the musicians that are here in the Comox Valley. For Shaw TV, this is Judy Mirakami. <laughs>